Hey, what is up everyone? Welcome back. In this video, we're gonna continue our series on this kind of introductory series on starting a cybersecurity journey. Now, in the first video, if you missed it, I encourage you to go back and watch that video first. But in the first video, we talked about my favorite subject and that was offensive security. In this video, we're gonna talk about the blue team side of things or defensive security. Now, I do wanna encourage you, a lot of people, at least when I talk to them, you ask them, hey, what do you wanna do in the world of IT? And it's always, I wanna be a hacker which I'm gonna be real with you, ethical hacking is not for everyone. Like truly, it can be exhausting, it can be a grind, it can be brutal, and the blue team tends to pay more. So if you are in this to get a lot of money, which isn't necessarily a bad thing, you should not overlook the blue team or the defensive side of security. I took about a $50,000 pay cut. Let me say it again. I took a $50,000 pay cut when I transitioned from the blue team to the red team side of things. Now, I'm happy about that because I love hacking and I live way below my means anyways, or way below what I, I, I make way more money than I need. So like that didn't really affect me and I enjoy what I do, but blue team really is a viable career in cyber and there's way more blue team jobs than there are red team or pen testing jobs. So what exactly is the defensive side of security? Well, they have a few different focuses if you're on the blue team, at least when I was on the blue team, I focused on what was vulner called vulnerability management. And that's a big part of blue team, but here's what I did. We would run scans with Nessus, which we'll eventually talk about, but Nessus is a vulnerability scan it scans all of the computers and systems in your business environment and says, hey, here are some major vulnerabilities you might want to take care of. And then I would patch those. So I use SCCM. You can Google that if you want, but really not that important. But I use that and some scripting in order to fix major vulnerabilities throughout the environment. So that's what I did in the blue team side. I also did a little bit of incident response, but that's some of the big focuses. On the blue team, you want to do some threat hunting. You want to hunt down threats before they become a real real threat in your environment. You wanna make sure there are no threats there. You also wanna find vulnerabilities before they're exploited so that you can then patch them. So in many ways, you need to still think like a hacker. You need to have your black hat on, quite literally, so you can think what a hacker is looking for in the environment, but your job is to defend the environment. That comes down to really two things. One is prevention intrusion, and two is detection intrusions, right? So prevention intrusion is of course stopping it before the intrusion happens, and detection intrusion is well, when it does happen, when you are breached, how will you know? And how will you respond to that breach before it costs your company and your business a massive amount of money? Now, there's some key security tasks that I've done in my job when I was on the blue team and that you will like to do. One of the things you'll like to do is user awareness training. It's often said that users are the weakest link in any organization and that is absolutely true. When you read threat intel and you study how a threat actor got access to an organization, it's often through a person. It may have been a phishing email, it may have been a text message, it may have been some social engineering scheme, but that's how they got access into the environment and you are responsible for training users on how to recognize that and not fall into that trap. You also do a lot of documentation and managing assets. You can't defend what you don't know you have. So one of the first things you will often do is get familiar with whatever the asset tracking management is in your organization, or if there isn't one, you need to start one. You cannot defend what you don't know that you have. You do a lot of updating and patching. That was one thing I did in my blue team job was patching on really business critical stuff. For me, it kind of sucked to be honest with you. I remember I worked at a bank and one of the things we had a patch was kind of our main bank server and SQL server. I had to wake up and do this at 3 a.m. Like <laughs> that's such a terrible time to wake up. Like if it was 1 a.m., I just wouldn't go to sleep. And if it was like 5 a.m., I would just wake up early. But you don't know how hard it is to wake up at 3 a.m. So I'd wake up at like 2.45 in the morning, um, walk downstairs, thankfully I was remote, to my computer and do this 3 a.m. patching, half asleep. And the whole time my heart's pumping though because if something goes wrong, this is like, this will cost the bank thousands of dollars per hour that everything's down. So like it's 3 a.m., my heart's pumping, making sure I don't break anything, but that is a big part of it. You need to keep things patched sometimes after hours to make sure you're not taking things down. 
But that is all the blue team, well, not all the blue team stuff. That's a big chunk of the blue team stuff. And one of the first jobs you might get on the blue team is working in a sock. And anytime I tell my kids about this, they're very confused because they think about the sock on their feet. But sock, I mean SOC, which is a security operations center. Now, what a sock does is it monitors and responds to network threats. So socks often run 24 seven and you're watching all these alerts come through. You're trying to dig through the different alerts, different things coming through, identify what's a true positive, what's a false positive, how can I respond to that? But you're doing this threat intelligence because there are real bad actors. There are real threat actors that want to take down your organization or the organizations you protect. And the SOC is kind of like the emergency room, the, the first line of defense, making sure it triages anything that comes through and detects when it happens. Another thing you might work in is what's called the DFIR or Digital Forensics and Incident Response. So this is focused on investigating digital crimes, intellectual property threat, cyber espionage. For YouTube, it involves taking down my YouTube videos. I'm still mad at you, YouTube, for that. YouTube took down one of my videos, showing clearly showing a CTF, but the Apparently, YouTube's way of doing digital forensics is taking down my videos. Thank you, YouTube. Now it's probably going to pick up this video and take this one down, but YOLO. But with DFIR, you're doing file system analysis, system memory, system logs, and network logs. And I'm going to be covering all of this in more detail on my YouTube channel. I'll be going through the entire pathway on Try Hack Me and bringing it hands on with all of those different things. But just know these are different ways of the blue team. On top of DFIR, a big interesting subject is malware analysis which I have personally always found fascinating. Malware analysis means you take the malware that is like literally destroying organizations and you rip it apart and you study it and you try to dig in and figure out what makes it tick. How can you stop it from happening? Uh, TCM Security has an incredible resource on this on practical malware analysis by my friend Matt Kiley. He and I actually did a live stream a while ago, like maybe that was two years ago, but you can check it out but all fun stuff. And the reason I share all that is I want you to know the blue team really is awesome. Uh, another one of my friends you may have heard of, John Hammond, we've also done a few streams together, but he said this, and it's always stuck with me, that he is on a mission to make blue team sexy again, right? Red team sexy, everyone wants to be a pen tester, he's on a mission to make blue team sexy. So if you're interested in blue team, follow John, follow his YouTube channel, follow the content that he makes, but let's go ahead and get hands on ourselves. I'm going to share my screen. I think I have done enough talking and we are gonna dive into a SIM. This might be something that you often would use in a SOC and this is how you manage alerts, this is how you respond to alerts and I'm in this Try Hack Me Defensive Security intro room. I will drop a link to this in the description of this video so you can follow along. But here we go, we're gonna click view site and we are in our sim. So a day in the life of a junior associate security analyst. Let me see if I can zoom in so you can see this okay. And here it is. It's it's pronounced sim. I think some people call it sim. Call it whatever you want. Who cares? But it's a sim. And we have this goal. We're working in our SOC. We need to find the malicious IP address from the alerts, make a note of it, and then click on the alert to proceed. So we're looking at this. We have our countries that are connecting. We have Russia and North Korea. You know, that, that might be a little bit sus. I'm just saying. But here we have a few undefined 10th things. I don't know if that's supposed to be undefined or if that's a bug or maybe we're supposed to define it. But we have down here a login fa failure. Uh, specified accounts password has expired. Not maybe super suspicious at all. But this is interesting. We have multiple failed login attempts from John Doe. And I think I just saw John Doe over on the chat. So John Doe, you've been pwned, my friend. But multiple failed login attempts from John Doe. The user John Doe was logged in successfully. So it looks like there may have been a password brute force attack here where a threat actor was spraying a list of common passwords at the John Doe account. I just realized my face is blocking this, guys. Watch this magic of video. I can move my face over there. Now you can see this better. There we go. But multiple failed login tests from John Doe, likely password spraying, but then the user John Doe has logged in successfully. Dun, dun, dun. And we have an unauthorized connection attempt detected from IP address that on port 22. Now, port 22, you should know this if you want to get into the SOC, is SSH or Secure Shell. That's like working on the Linux command line. This is not a good thing if a threat actor has a, has a connection attempt there because then they do have a successful one. So this isn't just detecting the threat before it happens. We are hunting down the threat and we're supposed to make note of this IP. So let's go ahead and copy this IP here and we'll pull up our notes. I'll just erase all this other stuff that I had here. 
And there is RIP to make note of it. So we have note of RIP. What am I supposed to do? Find malicious IP, make a note of it, and then click on the alert to proceed. All right. There are websites on the internet that allow you to check the reputation of an IP address to see whether it's malicious or suspicious, and which there are, and I used this when I was on the blue team. So now we wanna see, hey, is this IP suspicious? Let's go ahead and grab our IP here, and we'll paste in our IP address and click submit. And it says, oh no, we can read this. There's open source databases like Abuse and Cisco Talos, all cool stuff. Most security analysts use these tools to aid them, blah, blah, blah. But look at this. This IP was found in our database. Confidence of the IP being malicious is 100%. We have China coming after us. <sighs> that is not a good thing. So we need to escalate it to a staff member. Now, we shouldn't worry too much if it's a failed authentication attempt, but you probably noticed the successful authentication attempt from the malicious IP. That is not good. Let's declare, let's declare a small incident event and escalate it. So who should we send this to? Do you think we should tell sales, hey, yo, Dominic, bro, like John's account's been pwned. Can you do something about this? No. We have a security consultant, but they may not be the most helpful. I'm a security consultant, but I'm a consultant. And if you're going to escalate something like this to me, it's going to cost your organization probably a lot of money. And this isn't something to immediately escalate to a consultant. We have an information security architect. They're also probably not the best person. An architect designs the overall systems. If you have someone setting up, for example, the entire environment in the cloud in AWS or Azure, they're an architect. They're putting everything together, but we're in the sock. So I think will, as long as we don't get slapped, Boom, boom, shh. If I knew how to do video editing, there'd be a laugh track behind that. But we got Will Griffin, the SOC team lead. I think he'd be a good person to escalate this to. So let's choose him. And it says, we got permission to block the malicious IP address. Now, this isn't gonna do a whole lot against a real hacker. It's super easy to change your IP. If you saw the video of me, quote unquote, hacking Network Chuck's websites, he actually did that to me. When I when I was going through Network Chuck's websites, he blocked my IP. I just jumped into VPN and changed my IP over and over again so he couldn't block me. But it is something we can do. So we received permission at least to block the malicious IP address. So it says block it and find out what message is for you. So we need to block our IP. You can see here's our current block list. These are other IPs that have been blocked. And we need to block our IP address, which I think is still saved. It is right there. And we will click block IP address, and there we go. If you're following along with the room, you can go ahead and put in that flag on the bottom here, THM a threat blocked, and I'll just do it for fun, and I'll move my face. Whoops, maybe not move the whole screen, maybe just my face. There we go, and I'll move my face back over to the side with the magic of OBS, and we will enter in the flag, and it is complete. So hey, hopefully you learned something in this video about defensive security, and believe it or not, I do my best to read all the comments in my YouTube video. So if you have a question about something I said, maybe something was unclear you want me to clarify, let me know in the comment. Honestly, would love to hear from you. Or maybe you work in the blue team. Let me know what your day-to-day -day is like if you recommend it for others. But thanks for watching this. I will see you in the next one.